Hi everyone, Morgan here. We're gonna take a look at two very popular and powerful tools in character rigging for After Effects that behave in a very, very similar way. Joysticks and sliders and Duick Basil's connector tool. Now I wanna make it really clear that this is not a how-to tutorial. What I'm gonna do instead is compare and contrast these two very similar tools so that when you're making choices in your rigging workflow, you have a good understanding of the pros and cons of these tools and why you might wanna choose one over the other or perhaps use a combination of the two. There are a lot of really good tutorials out there for both joysticks and sliders and Duick Basil's connector. I cover the connector pretty thoroughly in my Rigging Academy course. School of Motion's own Jake Bartlett on his YouTube channel has a wonderful tutorial doing a complete facial rig with the Duick Basil connector that's really worth checking out. Both joysticks and sliders and Duick Basil's connector tool essentially allow you to take keyframed animation from one or more layers and connect it to a simple controller system, simplifying all kinds of rigging situations. Duick Basil's connector comes as part of the entire Duick Basil rigging and animation system, which is really a complete and comprehensive rigging and animation tool set. Joysticks and sliders is just a self-contained tool that just creates the joysticks and sliders and connects the animation to them. So to start with here, I've got two almost identical head rigs. They're both very, very simple, kind of classic faux 3D or 2.5D character face rigs. Both of these have a basic head turn joystick that allows you to look the heads up and down and side to side. Both of them have an eye aim control which allows their little eyeballs to look up and down and around. Both of them have a smile and frown control to change their facial expressions. And both of them have a very simple eye blink control. It's really just a squash and stretch control that allows you to blink their eyes open and closed. So these are very, very basic rigs, not very complicated. And you can see that I was able to get essentially exactly the same rigs out of these two tools, which demonstrates how similar these tools really are. But let's talk through some of the differences and examine the advantages and disadvantages of them both. So to start with, we can just look at cost. You do have to pay for joysticks and sliders, whereas the entire Duick Basel system is completely free. So with that free Duick Basel system, you're getting the connector, which can really do most of what joysticks and sliders does. But I will say that there are some specific things that joysticks and sliders does that Duick Basil's connector will not do. And there are other advantages to joysticks and sliders that makes it well worth the really minimal cost. So I mentioned cost as an advantage disadvantage, but quite frankly, joysticks and sliders is a great tool that is well worth the money. One of the first big advantages that joysticks and sliders has over Duick Basil's connector is that it is much easier to set up. It's a very, very simple process. And once you've created your keyframes on your various layers, it's really just a couple of clicks to rig something up. Now the Duick Basil connector is more complicated and takes a little more time to set up. But there's a flip side to this because the connector will also give you a few more options than joysticks and sliders does in return for it being a little more complex. Another distinct advantage that joysticks and sliders has over the Duick Basil connector is the way that it handles the joystick controls. And by joystick controllers, they simply mean controllers with both an X and a Y value. In the world of the Duick Basil connector, it's known as a 2D slider, but it's the same concept. I'm just gonna call them both joysticks for simplicity. But all joystick controllers share the same basic concept, which is that you essentially have five states that you're able to morph between. 
a center or neutral state, a right, a left, an up, and a down. Now the way joysticks and sliders works with this kind of controller is that you simply create the five states on the necessary layers, center, right, left, up, and down. You connect those to the joystick, and the joystick automatically creates smooth morphing between those five different states to give you the kind of faux 3D head turn look or whatever other kind of rigging effect you're going for. You could have five states of a dance on a full figure or whatever. And it does this with any property, including properties that don't have separate X and Y values, which is honestly most properties. Now that first of all makes the joysticks and sliders very easy to set up. You simply make your five states, you select them, you connect them to your joystick, and boom, you're done. The Duick Basil connector system works a little differently and has some specific restrictions because of the way it works. So let's actually go ahead and open up the head precomp here for our Duick Basil connector rig because this will make it a little easier to understand the differences. So the way the Duick connector works is that you either create a controller and you have sliders, the kind of joystick style and a rotation, or you can pick any property. And that's actually a big advantage for the Duick Basil connector, but we'll talk about that later. And then just like joysticks and sliders, you select animation and connect that to the controller. However, with the Duick Basil connector, you're forced to separate the animation that's connected to the X value of your joystick and the animation that's connected to the Y value value of your joystick. Rather than joysticks and sliders, which just cleanly morphs from one state to another between the five states that you set up, with Duick Basil, you have to specify this animation goes with the X value of the controller, this animation goes with the Y value of the controller. So what that means is that you essentially have three states for each axis rather than five states cleanly connected to the joystick. This both makes Duick Basil's connector more complicated to set up, and it also restricts you in a few areas, some of which you can get around with some workarounds, but one specific one that essentially eliminates a possibility for the Duick Basil connector, and I think all by itself justifies a purchase of joysticks and sliders if you do a lot of rigging. So let's look at what I mean. So the first thing is that with with position values, if you're rigging with the Duick Basil connector, you have to split your position values. And so you can see here that I've got basically three states for X and three states for Y, each separately connected to the joystick controller back in the main comp. Now that's not such a difficult thing. It's a little more time consuming to set up, but it's not that big a deal. However, this starts to get more complicated when you're talking about rotation and scale properties, where with scale you can't split the X and the Y, or rotation where there isn't an X and a Y, or more significantly, something like a shape layer path or a mask path that has no numeric value at all and therefore, again, has no X and Y separation. Now, in the case of this nose, I only needed the nose to rotate when the head moved back and forth. So I was able to connect the rotation of the nose just to the X value of the controller. But if I had also wanted the rotation to change when moving the controller up and down in Y, I would not have been able to do that without parenting the nose to an additional null to essentially split the rotation values between X and Y on the controller. So you can see an example of this with the eyes. So I'm going to unlock these three eye layers, and we'll hit the U key. And you can see that I had to actually create two nulls so that the actual eye shape layer is parented first to one null controller and then to another null controller in order to effectively split different position and scale animations to be assigned to the X or Y values of the controller. This meant that I had to do these extra nulls and extra parenting, and I had to really think through which bits of animation were connected to X or Y on the controller in order to get the effect I wanted. 
Now, again, I was able to get it to happen, but not without quite a bit of messing around and additional work that I did not have to do using joysticks and sliders. Now, you still will run across situations with joysticks and sliders where you may need to parent to a null to separate out some values so that one thing could be controlled by a slider while another thing's being controlled by a joystick. But for the most part, this is the biggest drawback to using Duick Basil's connector compared with joysticks and sliders where you can simply create your five states and connect them up. It's a much more straightforward system and its ability to morph between those five states in a non-linear fashion works a lot better than the Duick Basil system, which is essentially linear X and Y and then you just have to figure out how you're going to separate and connect those different animations to the X and Y values of the controller. Now, I was able with these kind of standard properties to work this out with all of the different nulls, but where this really causes the biggest problem with Duick Basil Connector is with shape paths and mask paths. There's essentially no way in Duick Basil's connector to create a five state morph, in other words, center, right, left, up, down morph of a shape layer path or a mask path connected to a joystick because you just have the linear connection of the keyframes to either X and Y. So you can have three states, center, right, and left, or center, up, and down, but you can't have five connected in a non-linear fashion. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. So here is a vector shape, a shape layer. I've created five keyframes on the shape path of this layer and connected it to a joystick using joysticks and sliders. And by the way, really easy to do. Just made the keyframes, selected them, clicked the joystick button, and I was good to go. So now I can click and drag on this joystick and I can morph between these five states smoothly. It's a non-linear morphing. So even though the keyframes were created in a linear fashion, center, right, left, up, and down, I can morph between them in a non-linear fashion in any way I want. Now for character rigging, particularly facial rigging, this is incredibly powerful, especially if you're dealing with more complex head shapes or hair, shapes that are really gonna change and morph as they move spatially. This is an important ability to have in those situations. Now, it's not perfect. If you'll notice when I kind of go in between some of these, I get some kind of wonky shapes happening. It's not absolutely perfect, but I'm doing kind of a crazy morph of this little blob here. If you were just subtly changing the shape of a face as it turns in space, or subtly changing the shape of the hair as it turns in space, this would work perfectly fine. Now, as I said, this is essentially impossible with the Duick Basil connector because you cannot work in this kind of non-linear fashion of connecting five states to a controller. I did attempt one workaround, but it still didn't work very well. So let's just talk about that workaround because if you're familiar enough with the Duick Basil system, you might think of this as a potential workaround. Duick Basil has a wonderful tool, which by itself is marvelous which is the bones tool, which essentially allows you to take any spatial property and connect it to a control layer. In the older versions of Duick, this was only used to connect puppet pins to controller nulls. But in Duick Basil, this now extends to any spatial property, including the vertexes and bezier handles of mask and shape layer paths, which is awesome and incredibly powerful. So when I was looking at this limitation with Duick Basil's connector, I thought, well, what if we took this shape layer and we connected the vertexes and the beziers to Duick Basil bones, which then will have separate X and Y values. So let's take a look at that. So here I've done that. And I'll first unshy this so you can see. So here is my blob shape with my path on it which I selected and I ran the bone script, and then the bone script created these controller layers, which allow me to control 
my path with separate layers, which again, amazing and awesome and powerful. Lots and lots of applications for this. So the vertexes each have a controller. The Bezier handles in and out each have a separate controller, which means you can parent them, you can shape them along motion paths, you can add expressions to them, all kinds of cool stuff. Super awesome. But unfortunately, not a whole lot of help in this particular situation. So what I did is I took these vertex controllers and I split the X and Y values. So I was able to connect the X value to the X value of the controller, the Y value to the Y value of the controller. Now this workaround might work in extremely simple situations, but it broke down very, very quickly with the connector because to get the kind of complex shapes I was trying to get, because I needed both X and Y to change on the vertexes and the Bezier handles for both the X value of the controller and the Y value of the controller. So I didn't even try to deal with the Bezier handles. That was just impossible because anytime you move the Bezier, you're moving it both in X and Y. I tried to get away with just moving the vertexes, but just moving the vertexes only in X or only in Y really limited what shapes I could get. I couldn't freely create the shapes I wanted to. If I wanted to do that, I would once again, like we looked at in the head rig, have to parent these to nulls, perhaps multiple nulls, in order to have changes on X and Y for the X and Y values of the controller. And if we added in the Bezier handles, I would end up with dozens of layers here and it would get so complicated it honestly just made my head hurt just trying to think about it. The best I could do was this, and it's not real great. So let's just take a look. So you can see I kind of sort of get the morphing with just the X and Y, but I really didn't have full control over my shapes, and I get these weird kind of pringly shapes in between. It just didn't work. And again, to try to make it work was a headache on a scale that I didn't even want to think about. This all by itself makes joysticks and sliders not only worth the money, but I would argue an essential element in the toolkit of anyone doing a lot of rigging in After Effects. Now, all of that said, the Duick Basil connector does have some advantages over joysticks and sliders as well. One of those advantages is the ability to put keyframes in between the main pose states that you're connecting to your controller. With joysticks and sliders, it's necessary for the keyframes to be directly next to one another, one frame after another with no space in between, otherwise the script will not work. With the Duick connector, your keyframes can be spread as wide apart as you want them to be, and you can include additional keyframes in between the main pose states. This can be incredibly useful if you're not getting the kind of morphing from one state to another that you want and you want to finesse it in some way. A really good example of this can be seen in Jake Bartlett's tutorial on doing a head rig with the Duick Basil connector, where he inserts some opacity keyframes to allow an ear to jump from being behind the head to being in front of the head. That would be difficult, if not impossible, to accomplish with joysticks and sliders, but with the Basil connector is really quite easy. But an even more powerful advantage that the Duick Basil connector has over joysticks and sliders is its ability to connect animation on one or more layers to any property at all. So you'll notice here it says create controller or pick master property. So what that means is you can either create a slider, a joystick, or a rotation control, or you can choose any master property at all, any numeric property in After Effects. Now that can include expression controls, but it can also include any numeric property on any layer at all. Now this is really a huge thing because it opens a vast array of possibilities for both rigging and animation in After Effects. And it goes way beyond character animation, but it's especially significant to character animators. So let's look at just one example of how this can be used. And keep in mind, 
This is only one example. There's so much you can do with this, there's no way I could explore every possibility. Here I have a vector art arm already rigged up with a basic IK rig here in Duic. But what I want to do is create a kind of muscle man arm so that when I flex the arm, a muscle, a bicep muscle, grows on the upper arm. So what that means is I want the rotation of the forearm here, the forearm joint, to drive the animation of my bicep rising up. So let's unshy these layers. So you can see on the upper arm here that I've actually already created the animation of the bicep rising up. There it is. So it's a size animation on this ellipse and a little position animation to shift it up a little bit as it grows. So again, what we want is for the forearm rotation to drive this animation of this bicep. So I'm going to go to the forearm structure, which if you're familiar with rigging and Duic Basil, is like the bone for the forearm. And I'm going to click on the R key for rotation there. And I just want to figure out at what point do I want the bicep at its full height. So somewhere around minus 90 degrees will probably be good. So all I need to do now is select this rotation property here and choose this as my master property for my animation. So now you can see that rotation is the master property. Let's raise this up just a little bit. And then I need to set the minimum and maximum value. So the minimum is going to be zero degrees. And our maximum rotation will just round up from the minus 90 to minus 100. And then I simply select the animation that I want to be driven by this rotation value and hit connect to properties. Now, lately I've been getting this odd little message from After Effects. It's not even really a warning. It just says angle. I'm not really sure why that's happening. I'm using CC 2018, but it doesn't affect anything. So I'm just going to click OK. It's going to do it again for the second one. And now I've got my expressions on there. And so now when I pick up and move this, now you can see my bicep flexes, which is really great and really simple. Now this could be used for all kinds of things, muscles growing, wrinkles in fabric, or tweaking the outlines of an outlined shape, which I've actually already done here. So if we look at the forearm artwork, you'll see that I have the start and end of a trim path animation, which is making it so this outline doesn't start to touch this other outline when I have the arm in extreme position. Let's just turn this expression off really quick to see what happens if I don't have this in place. See how that starts to encroach and pinch and look really bad right there. But with the expression on, it makes sure that that outline doesn't overtake the shape and I still get a nice joint at the arm here. I've got the same thing happening on the hand. Where I've got both the start and the end of that outline so that at no point does it start to connect with that edge, even if I go really quite extreme. So again, if I turn this off, and I'm not sure if this is the start or the end, let's, oh, it was the start. You see that really doesn't look as good because that line is starting to pinch into that other line, but with the expression on, keeps a little bit of space there and looks much better. But again, we're only just scratching the surface. When you think about the possibilities inherent in the idea that you can have any numeric property of any kind drive any amount of animation on any number of layers, that makes the Duic Basil connector a very, very powerful tool indeed, despite some of its disadvantages in comparison with joysticks and sliders. Now, another really great advantage is the connect to opacity script. Let's take a look at that. So here we have a head, and inside this mouth pre-comp, I have a variety of different mouth shapes for lip sync or expression. And because this is such a common thing in the world of character rigging, the Duic Basil connector has a specific script just for this situation. So here on my face control null that I've added, I've added a slider, a mouth selector slider. And what I want is for the slider, as I slide the slider up and down, I want it to select these different mouth shapes. So note that I have 
four mouths along with the neutral. So the neutral is zero, and then there's four additional mouths there. So all I have to do to hook this up is first select the slider in the timeline. I can't select it here. I have to select it in the timeline. And I don't select the name of the slider. I select the slider itself. And then I, once again, choose that as my master property. And then I set a minimum and maximum. And what I want is for every 10 clicks along the slider to be a new mouth. So my minimum is zero. My maximum is going to be 40. Then all I have to do is go into my mouth pre-comp, select the mouths in the order I want them to appear. So I'm going to select mouth 0, hold down the shift key, and select mouth 4, and just click connect to opacities. And what happens, which is so slick, is that all of these mouth shapes have automatically had opacity keyframes turning them on and off added to them, and those opacity keyframes have been automatically connected to my mouth selector. So now as I move up my mouth selector 10 clicks at a time, I get a different mouth. Now I can also limit my slider to 40 by right clicking and choosing edit value and I can make my slider range 0 to 40 as well. And now I have this very nice slider control that allows me to move through those mouths easily. And all of that happened with just essentially one click on the connect to opacity script here in the Duic Basil connector. Now that's pretty amazing. Something so common for character animation, for mouths or eye blinks, or anything where you have sequential animation that you need to drive with a slider. So another very powerful advantage that Duic Basil has over joysticks and sliders. So just to recap our advantages and disadvantages here, with joysticks and sliders, the advantages are it's much easier to set up than the Duic Basil connector. It also allows you to create smooth, non-linear morphing between five state animations rigged to joysticks on any property without the need to split the animations between the X and Y controller axes. And where this is especially powerful is when we're talking about five state mask or shape path animations controlled by a joystick. The disadvantages with joysticks and sliders are that it's not free, you have to pay for it, but in my opinion it's absolutely worth every penny, so it's barely a disadvantage, but it's worth mentioning in comparison with Duic Basil, which is of course free. But it also has the disadvantage of not being able to put keyframes in between the pose states, which in some situations could cause some problems. Also, the fact that you're limited to connecting to just joysticks and sliders is not as flexible as the Duic Basil connector is. Now for the Duic Basil connector, one of the big advantages is that it's free and comes with a complete and comprehensive set of tools for rigging and animation besides just the connector. So you're getting so many different tools all bundled into one, all for the wonderful low price of nothing. The fact that you can add keyframes between the pose states is a useful advantage. And the fact that you can connect animations to any numeric property is also a huge advantage and opens up a lot of wonderful possibilities for the Duic Basil connector. And that connect to opacity script is super cool and super useful. The disadvantages for the Duic Basil connector are that it is more complex to set up than joysticks and sliders. And most significantly, it doesn't work in a non-linear fashion when it comes to the joysticks, or 2D sliders as it's called. In other words, you have to separate the animation connected to the X value of the controller from the animation connected to the Y value of the controller. Now that creates some significant issues as we've seen where you have to separate dimensions on position values. You might have to use some parenting to some nulls in order to split more complex animations between the two axes. And most significantly, in my opinion, you cannot create a joystick control for a five state shape or mask path animation. That specifically is, in my opinion, the reason why you would absolutely for sure, if you do a lot of rigging, you're going to want to have Duic Basil. There's really nothing better from a comprehensive all-around standpoint. But I also would not be without joysticks and sliders because that ability to create that non-linear morphing between five different states on a shape or a mask path is 
huge. And when you add that to the ease of setting up rigs with joysticks and sliders, I would argue that combining joysticks and sliders with Duick Basil is probably the best way to go. If you're only going to have one rigging tool, get Duick Basil. But I would consider joysticks and sliders, just like I would consider rubber hose, essential tools for any character rigger or animator working in After Effects. If you're interested in learning a lot more about rigging with Duick Basil, I recommend taking my Rigging Academy course at School of Motion. And if you're interested in learning more about animating with rigged characters in After Effects, check out my Character Animation Bootcamp class, also at School of Motion.